Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy, sharing with you today a platform pop-up with the Apple Bushel of Love. So I'm using Lawn Fawn's Build a Bushel Apple, and then the Apple Border die. I have all of my pieces for the platform pop-up cut out using the Lawn Fawn Sweater Weather Remix, and I think some are the 12 by 12 but I got free with the order, so they come in like a 6x6 six six sheet. I'm bringing in some Distress inks today and Distress Oxides. I ended up switching out my greens because I wanted my green to match the green on the sweater weather. When I was picking the greens, I hadn't thought about that. And so when I started, I was like, oh, it's going to clash with the green on my pattern paper. So I did bring in a different one. So I'm starting with the... What's the... I want to say Clover Meadow. I don't know if I'm right on that one. So I'm starting with that one, and then I'm going to bring in, I think it's Evergreen Bow, which really goes nicely with that pattern paper. And then I'm going to hit those leaves again with those. So I've already die cut all of my pieces out. I thought about doing them on colored cardstock, but sometimes it's just easier when you're doing a bunch of die cuts to do them on white and then do some ink blending. And I wanted to do ink blended apples anyways on this one, so it was just easier to do everything in white all at once, and then I didn't have to worry about it. So before I'm done with my green, I was going to add a little bit of green onto, a little bit of shading, I guess, on the top there of my grass for my platform pop-up. And then I'm going to start my apples. So originally I had thought about doing red yellow and green apples and then I decided it was probably I didn't have enough apples to I could have done the green ones but my apples were bigger so I didn't feel I needed to add the green on there and then it would have contrasted a little bit too much I think with my paper if I'd have gone with a granny smith color so I ended up going in with distress ink in lumberjack plaid and then I brought in the candied apple for my shading on the red and then for my yellow one, I'm going to start with that antique linen and darken it up with some fossilized amber. Just on the edges, I'm going to add a little bit of water splatters to them. And I didn't commit to my sprayer. I should have committed to my sprayer to get smaller splatters. I got bigger splots. But it is what it is. And then for my apple strip here, I'm going to just kind of selectively mask or simple mask with those all stick adhesives just to kind of you know just get the cuts there so I can do red and yellow apples and some of them are going to overlap just a teeny tiny bit they'll touch but it's fine because you know apples turn color so it's all good so once I have those ones done I'm going to kind of touch up those red ones with a little bit more of that candied apple and then I'm going to pull those out so I can do the other things. Spritz those, tap them off, clean up my work surface once again. And then for my stems, I'm going to bring in the Distress Ink Walnut Stain. And then I'll add those onto all of, just because I did cut my other stems, my bigger stems, that go with that Build-A-Basket stamp set on some brown paper. And so I did add just a little bit of shading on those as well. And then for my basket, I'm just going to do some simple masking or shading on that one as well. And then I needed more leaves. I cut because I didn't cut my actual dies apart, so I had run it through once. And it was not enough leaves, so I did run it through again and had to redo my leaves. And yes, I did leave it on top of my cutting mat because they were stuck and I didn't want to pull them. It was just faster. It, I, I was all about easy. Sometimes that's just, you know, the way it goes. So since I had them on the cutting board yet, I just kind of used that or on my, I think it's a cutting board cutting plate. For the Sizzix, I just kind of built it right on there while I was pulling them up. Pretty easy to just, you know, add on your leaves. These ones definitely are one side or the other, so I didn't 
think about it when I started, and I was like, oh, yeah, so it kind of lean one way or the other. So I will add those on as well. So as we are gearing up for fall, is there anything you would like to see that I haven't done yet? I mean, Juan Fon, I only caught, the I think, the tractor one. Um, we have been busy with family all week, and so I have yet to catch up on all of the rest of the things. And so I'll have to look at those probably next week after the release goes live and, you know, decide what I absolutely positively need. I have seen some spooky things and we all know Jamie's going to buy the spooky things but anyways so for that line of apples I didn't like how because I did the bigger apples I wanted to make the little ones match and so I ended up cutting apart each and every one and since it was tedious I didn't make you watch it so I did cut each one apart and then tuck it in the little slit that was in the hole it I wouldn't have needed to do it I don't think if I wouldn't have felt I needed to do it if I wouldn't have done the bigger apples. I just wanted them to be the same. And so I was pleased with how they turned out that way. I think it would have bugged me the other way. I was just extra. It was a detail thing. It didn't need to be done that way. I just did it that way because my bigger apples were going to be done that way. So I'm just going to build all of my pieces here. And the build the dies are kind of just, you know, it's like putting a puzzle together. So... It's a lot like that. So I'm just going to kind of figure out placement, what size apples I want in my bushel basket, and kind of figure out where I'm going from there. So I'm going to build my platform pop-up, and I wanted to have the green grass on the platform, platform base, so I did die cut those from another piece of cardstock and then I'm just going to cut where those score lines are and I did slow down this process for you here so if you haven't done one or you've been struggling this is how I do mine there it's this one is probably one of the most simple interactives that Lawn Fawn does I know it doesn't look like it would be that simple but it really is that simple so adding my double stick adhesive to those flaps. So you need two on each one for each of the halves. And then just double stick adhesive onto those T pieces. I only cut two T pieces for the holes in the platform pop-up. I don't do the middle piece anymore. I usually just use a piece of scrap cardstock or scrap paper or whatever my actual thing is going to be that is going to be in the middle. I just find it's sturdier. And so that's how I do that one. As you will see, we cut down this scrap piece here. So I kind of measure it to make sure that it's about the same width as the platform pop-up middle piece. Sometimes I go the same size. Sometimes I go a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. As long as it's within, you know, the the fold there it really doesn't matter how wide you go and so I like to run it the whole length of my platform pop-up and because I couldn't find the fourth piece that I cut don't worry I found it as soon as I was done gluing this one on but I was just using the negative to my grass piece it was a small enough piece that I wasn't too concerned with it not being exactly you know the grass piece and so before I make my platform pop up, I am going to add in that grass piece or that green piece to make my flooring or my, I don't know, I, I consider it as grass. It's kind of hard to add it after you have the platform pop up built because you have to go around the tee piece. So I've done it because I've forgotten and you have to make an extra slit. It's not too difficult, but it annoys me. So I do remember beforehand. And then I'm going to cut down my grass piece for my front one just a little bit already. And I like to liquid glue all the things because I have adhesive issues. And so if you're not comfortable doing the liquid adhesive because you do have to make sure it's dry before you, you know, squish everything together, it's you, you can use the double-sided adhesive. 
just where we live, it just doesn't seem to work very well. So I made sure that the T pieces that I wanted on the front were on the front and the one that I want on the back on the back platform pop up. So that's the only part when you do your T pieces beforehand, like your whatever is going to be on the T pieces, you need to make sure when you put them together that they're going to be together properly or the grass is going to be on the front and not the back of the T, if that makes sense. And I do add my tees in with a little bit of glue just to make sure that they stay stuck. You know, that whole, I'm going to be totally committed and, you know, my whole afraid of glue, double-sided adhesive not working. So I do usually do the double-sided adhesive and glue. And then I will do the same thing for my platform base here. And then, as Kate said in her last video, which really made sense, because it's one of those that if you don't get your side piece together right at the same time, like, this, like exactly how it's supposed to be, it kind of, you'll get the bow or the, so if you have problems with bowing on your platform base, try waiting to put your sides together until you have your platform base all put together, if that makes sense. I know people have asked because they have, like, theirs will bow. And it really doesn't affect how it works. It's just how it looks. And if that irritates you, do it this way. It tends, I don't get any of that bow on the inside because, it, you know, when you're folding it, you get plenty of room. This, just to me, was helping, helps me line it up. That's my issue if I do the side first is sometimes my bottom platform, like the bottom of my platform isn't exactly lined up straight. You know, because I'm not the greatest at making straight lines straight all the time. So that seems to help me if that's something that you struggle with. I don't know. So I will do the other one, and then that all comes together just so. And so there is my platform pop-up base. And then I will go in and add. So I wanted to put the biggest apples to the front and the littlest apples to the back because I have this thing about depth perception like you would think that the bigger apples are going to be closer to you and the smaller apples are going to be further away. I could have cut apart my little apple strip there and just done those in the basket. I guess I could have, you know, gotten away with it looking, doing the depth perception on it that way. <sighs> I ended up you know, going against what I would normally do. And I ended up putting the shorter, smaller apples in the front just for how it looked in the tiers. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. I think if I was doing a shadow box with this one, I would have been able to do the littler apples for the back and then the bigger apples because I, I could have dropped them down and left, you know what I mean? For that one where this one, you really don't have as much bleacher look to it and so you can't get the where the front isn't going to cover what's behind it so i think that's why i ended up doing the bigger apples in the back on this one and the smaller apples in the front because that bleacher effect isn't as you know there it's flat so it's not like a shadow box where you can do the angle up so i'm going to add all of those things in i added some extra leaves to my bushel basket to make it look fuller without actually having to add more apples to it. I did end up having an extra little apple and I did add that one in just to kind of give it, to make it look like there was more apples in there than just the three big ones. So I think three big ones and then one little one poking out just to get that stem. If I had just had a stem, an extra stem, I'd have totally just had the little extra stem sticking out with a leaf. So, and then I'm going to add in my bow onto kind of like that open area in between all of the apples. And then I still have three little apples left. And I thought, well, they'll work on the front. I just couldn't decide. I hadn't picked out a sentiment at this point yet. And I haven't done the other. I fiddled around with this one a lot. I just, and when I was all done with it, I was like, meh. <laughs> I texted it to Kate. I'm like, meh. And she's like, that's adorable. <laughs> so sometimes when you're doing it and it's just not going the way you wanted it, <laughs> I 
<laughs> it probably looks fine. It's just all you. <laughs> so I did bring in the MFT Circle Happy Birthday. I just thought it was perfect for adding that on to back behind it. It gives that angled happy birthday. I could have done maybe like the bigger one, but I didn't want the words overpowering. And it kind of just was, it kind of, it was the look I was going for. So I did cut off the bottom letters so they didn't stick out from behind my apples. And then I'm bringing in the build a, not the build a bushel, the bushel, it's the bushel basket one. So a bushel and a peck, I think is what the saying is. And I just did, I love you a bushel instead of a bushel and a peck. So I will add that onto the front with that piece of grass that I couldn't find earlier. See, it came in handy. It was fine. This is what happens when I can't find things earlier on. I end up using them later on. It worked. So, and then I will add in those last little apples. I will tuck them behind the grass. So then the front of my platform pop-up ties in to the rest of my platform pop-up. And then I will finish that up. And there is my finished platform pop-up. And I hope you have an amazing day. Keep getting inky. Make sure, like, subscribe, comment. Um, questions are always welcome. Recommendations are always welcome. I hope you have an amazing day. All right. Thanks. Bye.